Welcome everyone, I've made another puzzle. This is the Radio Flare or Radio 6 dodecahedron. It's a Radiolarian 6 in the shape of a dodecahedron, and the corners turn like this. Um, so like other puzzles in the old Radiolarian series, it can jumble. Um, it has this kind of jumbling move. So I'll line it up like that. Um, and this is the this is present on the more widely available radi Radiolarian 3, for example. Um, and then it also has this type of jumbling with these smaller groups of edge pieces. So, like this. Um, so the jumbling with smaller groups of edge pieces is a feature of puzzles that are in the middle of the Radiolarian series. Um, and as you can see, this is a massive puzzle. It weighs a little over 1.3 kilograms, or around 3 pounds. Um, so here is the MF8, um, Radio 3 do or dodecahedron. It's also called the Bauhenia dodecahedron 2 for comparison. Um, and then here is a Moyu RS3M, so just a standard 3x3. Three three. It's big. Um, so in spite of its size, it still turns fairly smoothly. Um, it does catch occasionally, but it's pretty good. Um, so what's all this about the Radiolarian series? The Radiolarians were a bunch of face-turning icosahedra done by Jason Smith uh, a few years ago. Um, they cover nearly all the possible cut depths for face-turning icosahedrons, um, and they're numbered 1 through 15. Uh, Corner-turning dodecahedron are, or dodecahedra are equivalent to face-turning icosahedra. Um, this is the corner-turning dodecahedron equivalent of the Radiolarian 6. So most of the series was never mass-produced or even made available as custom puzzles. There are a few that were mass-produced, though. For example, um, Aton Star... Um, Let's scoot that back. Uh, Aton Star is a Radiolarian 4. Um, and then the Bauhenia Dodecahedron 2. This is a Radiolarian 3 in the shape of a Dodecahedron. Um, and then the MF8 Radiolarian, um, they sometimes leave off the number. This one's just a Radiolarian 2. Um, so the Radiolarian, or the Radio 3 Dodecahedron, that's the Bauhenia is one of my favorite puzzles, so that's why I'm trying to revisit a few of the other puzzles in the old Radiolarian series. Um, I actually prefer the corner-turning uh, dodecahedron format uh, to the face-turning icosahedron format um, because the solution is mostly the same, um, but some of the setup moves for the various kinds of pedals are less involved. Um, so, these pedals. And then I also find it interesting to have uh, these pieces be rotation-sensitive instead of these. Um, so I printed it on my Anycubic Cobra Neo using a mix of Polymaker Polymax PLA and Inland Tough PLA. They're pretty similar materials, and they result in a nice turning texture. Um, the turns feel and sound a lot smoother than they would um, if I had been using ordinary PLA. Um, but I don't have to worry about the fumes that come from printing something like ABS, for example. Um, it's also a bit easier to get dimensional accuracy with these materials because they still behave a lot like ordinary PLA. Um, one advantage of using FDM, so those are the, just the common, common filament-based 3D printers uh, for Radiolarians, is that I'm less constrained by puzzle size um, than Jason was when doing his original series. Uh, his Radiolarians were, uh, were made using an SLS printing service, and SLS machines are way more expensive, um, so hobbyists usually only get SLS prints through printing services like iMaterialize, um, or they used to use Shapeways a bit more. Um, the quality of the parts is great, um, but the cost increases quite a lot with the volume needed um, inside those specialized printers. I'm using my own FDM machine, so I don't really care as much about the volume the parts take up. Um, with FDM, the cost depends more just on the amount of material used. Um, and these parts are mostly hollow anyway, so the material isn't that, it, it's nowhere near as expensive. Uh, the material isn't necessarily cheap for something this large, but it's so, so much cheaper um, than getting a comparable print from an SLS service would be. 
Um, and it does take more attention from me to print and clean up all the parts. Um, but getting the settings dialed in really well on your printer and slicer can make it so that that's not as bad. Um, so assembling this thing was a hassle. Um, and there are three distinct layers inside here. Um, the innermost one is a lot like a ready minx, and then the middle one is like a radiolarian 3, and then the outer one is what you see here. Um, the big decagons and corner pieces, um, they kind of overhang a bunch of pieces in the middle layer, and they interfere with assembling the middle layer. Um, so one of the corner pieces, I think it's this one, um, had to be made with a removable cap and a separate base. I'm not going to pop it off here, though, because it fits very, very tightly. Um, so most of the part screws down onto the base, and then the cap covers up the screw. Um, and this is to make it so that I was even able to snap in the last part for the middle layer. Um, I ended up printing the whole thing roughly twice to get the placement of gaps between layers right, um, because initially it was way too loose to even turn. Um, and now it's pretty snug. Um, so this is a pretty long-running project. Uh, my printer can produce pretty nice results, but it is not especially fast. Um, so hopefully the information I picked up in getting this, this design to work will streamline the process for making some more multi-layered puzzles. Um, so I have a few more puzzle designs in the works. Um, I've been on a roll with designing lately, so watch out for several more coming, uh, coming out over the next few months. Thank you.